Welcome to Unscripted Coding. Today we're going to talk about the very last piece of what was announced at Dev Day. This is the Assistance API. And it's very, very similar to the GPTs we were talking about the last two weeks. And we're going to give a very quick overview of what Assistance API is. And then we're going to go into the OpenAI Playground, set up an Assistant API, play around with the playground, and finally take a look at the logs to see how this all works behind the hood. So what are Assistance APIs? Well, I'm hoping you watched my previous videos on GPTs because Assistance APIs are basically GPTs unleashed into the wild. So let's scroll back. What are GPTs? Well, GPTs are customized bots that you can run within ChatGPT. So you log in, go on ChatGPT, and you have a regular conversation, just hello, how are you? Uh, that's what we're used to so far. GPTs are these new customized bots that you can create or, or uh, get from other people, and they give ChatGPT a bit of flavor and a bit of power. They will give it a role, some instructions. So for example, you are a accountant and your instructions are to receive a tax return and then you advise the person on the other side of the chatbot. You give it a role and instructions. And even better is that these GPTs have all the latest features of GPT-4 baked right in. And so these are code interpreter. So your bots can optionally be able to run code. They can uh, call APIs on the internet. They can search the internet. They can retrieve documents from a knowledge base. So basically you're getting those paid features. You're getting a bit of customization. And while it doesn't sound like a lot, we were able to really create some very fancy and, and full-fledged applications without any code, just writing plain English. Please do this, then this, then this, then this. Um, very, very powerful. But all of that was kept within the ChatGPT interface. On the other hand, if we want to write our own code, we want to incorporate it into a, a web browser, into our apps, into our tools, we need Assistance API because it gives you all of those features, but you can run it you know, outside of ChatGPT. You can run it anywhere you want, on the web, on your phone, on your apps, wherever. So you know me, the best place to start is always the API reference. You want to take a look at what is happening. And Assistance is here under this tab, Beta, which means that and OpenAI is moving very quickly, this is a true beta, that these aren't final. If you've written code, be prepared to have to tweak it to make some changes in the future because it is a beta. And as I look down the list, I was a bit confused because what are these threads, messages, and runs? And the best place to start is the Assistance API overview. Basically, all four of these pieces are related to each other. You're going to need all four pieces to actually get the effect of having a workable chatbot. And how it works is it just goes down the scale from very high to very low basic scale. Um, first of all, you create an assistant. That is your high level. You create the bot and basically you give it the custom instructions. You, you tell it what model and then you tell it who it is, what it's doing, what the instructions are. And I guess um, in the background you enable what features you'd like within your chatbot. Then you create a thread, which is your conversation. Then you add your messages in that conversation. And finally, you actually run, which is asking for the next piece of the, the, the thread of, of the conversation. 
Now luckily, today we are not going to go through all of this code. Um, it's actually very straightforward. These are all API calls, which makes working with AP OpenAI a breeze. But even better is that you can just create an assistant on the playground and we'll take a look at how, how we use this afterwards. So when you sign in to platform.openai.com, uh, you can look for a playground. And you can create multiple assistants. In this case, um, you'll see that historically you could do a chat playground. That's how uh, I used to do a lot of testing back and forth. You know, you you basically say hello and you submit, and and you can have the conversation that way and view the code. Now, of course, they have a new place here uh, for assistants, and we'll just wait a minute for it to load here. And what we're going to have to do is, of course, create our first assistant. Let's call our assistant Help Desk Agent. And I have a specific example in mind here, but uh, you know, a lot of businesses want to have front-facing chatbots that are smart, that can answer questions. And here is a help desk. Now, we can go endlessly about prompting, but uh, I will stick with the basic, you are a help, helpful assistant. Uh, you can reach into documents in your knowledge base or onto the internet to, to answer questions from your client. Now, naturally, you could pick, you know, a cheaper model if you'd like. Let's just go with GPT-4. I'm curious here really quickly. Ah, okay. Functions are the API calls. So if I want to reach through the internet into, say, um, Bitcoin prices, stock prices. There are specific places on the internet. You don't want to just do a general browse. Uh, we're going to ignore that today. And we're going to ignore the code interpreter, which is writing code. And I'm realizing, uh, let's, let's not have onto the internet. Um, but what we can do is retrieval, which is reaching into a specific set of documents we are going to add right now. And so, earlier today, before this video, I downloaded a number of manuals for Samsung tablets. You'll find this uh, Galaxy Tab, I think this is the S6 Lite, um, and then this one might be the Tab A 8.0, and then there's a 10-incher, there's the new um, Galaxy Tab S9, whatever. There's there's just a bunch of different tablets here. And I just downloaded their manuals. These are standard PDFs. And this is now part of its knowledge base. Now, because it is in beta, there are restrictions. There is a max of 20 files or um, I think uh, 100 gigs of space. Uh, across your all of your assistants, so you you cannot just go and take you know a thousand files from your workplace. But this is a proof of concept. Uh, I think this is just like Langchain. This is just like Azure Cognitive Search, which we've talked about. They're just using uh, Rag um, to to retrieve the right piece of these documents. So they might be doing a keyword search or something a little more sophisticated than a keyword search finding the right section and then adding it into the document. Nice and simple, we're going to click Save. And it might take a moment to register all these documents, but now I have an assistant. So of course, our next piece is we have a thread. So this is the conversation that, that's being created. It's an empty conversation. So I can start the messages by saying, hi. And I can add. And, and what's interesting is, unlike the chat playground, uh, it, you don't get an automatic response because sometimes users might want to say a couple of things. You know, I might be someone who talks a lot. 
have three or four chats before the I expect the other guy to respond. So the next thing is I bought a tab S6 Lite recently. And I'll add, can you tell me what size the screen is? I believe it is 10.1 inches, so let's see if it can fetch the information for us. So I'll add and run and see what happens. And of course, this does take a little longer. We know that GPT-4 is just a little bit slower than GPT-3. And of course, now it's added that overhead of retrieving the right section from the documents and responding. Now this is taking a little longer than I'd like. I suspect we, uh, it, it might still be indexing the files here. Mm, but it stopped. So I'm gonna click run again and see where we go. And let's take a look at the threads. So run the thread, get runs. And we're not really getting a response yet. So I think what I'm going to do is pause this video right here, come back in five or 10 minutes, because it might still be indexing these files, just processing it, creating a vector for it to very effectively and efficiently search through these files. So I don't think I'm giving it a fair shot right now. Be right back. Okay, so I had to Google uh, it really quickly about what was happening because I waited five minutes and it still wasn't good. Uh, it turns out just uh, an odd quirk. You might want to turn on Code Interpreter uh, when you try it because for whatever re reason, retrieval wasn't working just alone. And so uh, I had cleared it and obviously this is a different question here, but I sent in hello it uh, responded, how can I assist you today? Very common. And then afterwards I said, I got a new Samsung Tab S9 tablet. How do I set it up? And this is when it reached into one of these documents. One of them is the S9. I, it might be this one or this one. Just trying to remember what the model numbers are, but it, it picked out what should be in here. Um, in, in this long document, and, and you'll see that it has summarized the major points uh, for you. And so I'm gonna clear this once more, and this is always risky to do, uh, but uh, hello, I got a, an S9 tablet, and let's see, what what is one of the things we might ask here? Uh, what are the navigation buttons um, for, let's say? Or where are the navigation buttons? And we will ask. So you can see right away where what is happening along the way with the logs. And these are all calls you could do with, you know, plain JavaScript. You will see, you know, a post to create the thread, add a message, run the thread. It's, it's getting the status along the way. And finally, you know, getting, getting the message here. So uh, navigation buttons are on the bottom of the screen, blah, blah, blah. This I think was exactly what I was looking for. Display, navigation bar, navigation buttons, and that matches uh, sort of over here. Uh, buttons instead of navigation buttons. And there is uh, some sort of source here uh, that is given. So, um, long story short, you can play around with Playground. And if, you know, I spent the first months 
with OpenAI API within the playground when it was just chat. And I imagine I will do the same, just playing around with assistance instead of you know going through all the steps of writing the code. But uh, when you're ready, you can see step by step what um, what the what the what your calls should be and what you should be expecting as a a response. And so uh, thank you. And we'll just run it and see uh, how it goes. So this is just the next evolution of chat. It's empowering the old chat API. A lot of this will look familiar, but adding new features to it so that we can start running code, we can start creating functions um, along with just having our casual chat. And once again, we could start really expanding on all of these. This was really crappily put together. Um, I would expand these instructions greatly and say, if you have an S9, this is the right file to go. Uh, if you have an S6 Lite, this is the right file to go, just to make it very, very easy for uh, the assistant to reach into it. But um, regardless, I think this is pretty cool. Even with just 20 files, keep in mind these can be massive files. Um, you can you can do a lot. So for example, all of these, you might wanna run them through Adobe Acrobat, just join them all into one massive file and say, this is Samsung tablet instruction files. And then you might have another one that's Lenovo tablets, all mashed into one large document and see how it does. Uh, for some documents, it might be a little easier, others, maybe not. Anyways, I hope you're impressed because I am very impressed with assistance. Um, for a little while, when you built your app, you were kind of shoehorned because ChatGPT Plus just had more features along the way that, that you couldn't access. But now uh, you're getting a bit of feature parity and once again, I can start building apps that, that can compete with ChatGPT for obviously for a specific niche, for a specific reason and, and monetize it, customize it, make it open source, whatever it may be. Um, I think we will probably do another video very soon, uh, maybe next week or maybe the week after in which we are going to actually use uh, Python to, 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 to run this properly. So uh, stay tuned next week and please like, subscribe and keep your eyes peeled on this channel for the next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you around.